Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I've been exploring active loading techniques for BJT amplifier design. I've been playing around with Falstad, and on the left here, I have a common emitter amplifier configuration, and on the right, I have a common base configuration. In both configurations, I'm using a PMP transistor to set the bias current, and I'm doing that using a VEB junction of 0.7 volts. I have to say VEB because it's PNP. So down here on the left, you can see I have a voltage source for my input. I've set this to have a DC offset of 700 millivolts, and this is a 1.4 volt peak to peak signal. Now, both of these configurations are high gain configurations. So you would expect the output to rail all the way one way or the other, and you see it does. That's this little green path. The red line is showing the input. However, I'm referencing its measurement to that 0.7 volts. So if you see it at zero, it's really at 0.7. I did that to sort of make it easier to separate what is going on on the graph. And let's see, we see that it is an inverting configuration. So when the input is high, the output is low and vice versa. Now over here for the common base configuration, I need different bias voltages. I set this up so that the bias on the input is 700 millivolts. The bias on this base of this NPN transistor for the common base configuration is at 1.4 volt. And once again, I'm measuring the output as is, but I'm measuring the input reference to 0.7 volts. Now, the common base amplifier is a non-inverting configuration. So here, when the input goes up, the output goes up. And when the input goes down, the output goes down. Now, it's interesting to note that this isn't reeling out all the way at the lower end. It's showing a little bit of roundedness at the bottom here. So when you're interpreting the results here, the sort of math you usually do to figure out what's going on is really only in play during these very brief transitions when the input's very close to that bias point. And that math is usually done assuming both transistors are in the active region. In the particular case where you see no current flowing here and you see all of the current flowing through here, that's a case where this transistor is no longer in the active region and it's in what is for BJTs called saturation. I find that to be confusing terminology, so I prefer to say the ohmic region. And you can see a similar thing up here. So if you don't see any current moving here, but you see all the current moving up here, that means that this transistor is not in the active region. Anyway, I used the export as link feature in Falstad. So I'll put some links below. I'll also include the text. So you can actually say, uh, where do you do that? You say import from text and you'll be able to copy and paste text in case those links ever die. And you can play around with this.